Hello. This presentation is a summary of the anatomy of the brachial plexus uh, with emphasis on the features important for the ultrasound examination. And then this is followed by a guide, a practical guide uh, to the ultrasonography of the brachial plexus, uh, more like a personal approach. This is the summary uh, slide of the anatomy. As you know, the plexus is made up of roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. Um, and the major anatomical landmark in this region is the clavicula, which divides the plexus in the supraclavicular and an infraclavicular region. In the infraclavicular region, the pectoralis minor muscle uh, is the border between the axillary and the infraclavicular region per se. Uh, the plexus originates from the C5 to the TH roots, which are, st strictly speaking, not really roots because they are the anterior branches of the spinal nerves, but, but for the sake of simplicity, we call them roots, which then make up the trunks. They are still supraclavicular, the upper, the middle, and the lower trunk, which then in turn divide into divisions, the anterior and posterior divisions, with the exception of the upper trunk, which has a trifurcation uh, into the divisions and the suprascapular nerve. This uh, division usually takes place underneath the clavicula, more or less, or just immediately uh, cranial to the clavicula. And then, uh, caudally, as the plexus emerges from underneath the clavicula, they are already cords, which are called the lateral, posterior, and the medial cords, which encircle the subclavian artery. And then these form eventually the terminal branches uh, of the brachial plexus. There are also quite a few uh, branches uh, of the plexus per se. These are usually rather small and very difficult to examine in ultrasound. The plexus also contains autonomic fibers, but they are only sympathetic fibers and they run uh, with the uh, somatic nerves. Here you see a simplified anatomical view of the uh, nerve roots as they exit the spine. This is very important from the point of view of ultrasound examination because this is we use the shape of the transverse processes as a guide for the identification of the root level. Starting from the C8, as you can see, it exits from underneath the C7 vertebra, uh, so it's not, uh, it does not uh, ride, so to say, on the transverse process. Whereas from C7 and upwards, uh, the roots exit, uh, sliding out on the transverse processes of their respective vertebra. Uh, and the shape of these processes is unique, especially for the C7, which has a rudimentary tubercle, anterior tubercle and a, a prominent posterior tubercle. Whereas the C6 and upwards, they are more regular, uh, more, have a more regular V shape. The T1 root is actually not a root, but a communicate, communicating branch from the first uh, thoracic nerve. And as you can see from the lateral view, that the T1 and the C8 root, they form a V around the first rib. There are also other anatomical landmarks uh, uh, important for the ultrasound examination. Uh, this is, um, of course, the middle uh, and the anterior scalene muscles. They enclose the plexus and the uh, subclavian artery. It's called the scalene cleft, interscalene cleft. And uh, you see that the uh, subclavian vein is located anterior to the uh, anterior scalene muscle. It does not go through this cleft. There are also several arteries. Uh, crossing this region, which are very variable, and then the omohyoid muscle. Also to be noted is the subclavis muscle, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which may be important uh, uh, in, uh, in some patients with thoracic outlet syndrome. You can see here in the infraclavicular region, the pectoralis minor muscle originating from the coracoid process, dividing the plexus uh, uh, into the axillary and the infraclavicular region. Here's some literature for you for the ultrasound examination of the brachial plexus. And I will show you uh, my personal approach. I start uh, at the supraclavicular uh, fossa, immediately cranial to the clavicula. In this, in this fossa, in this region, the first uh, landmark you have to identify is the uh, subclavian artery. Uh, 
right here because the plexus is located immediately lateral and superficial or ventral to the subclavian artery. Uh, lateral to that is the middle scalene muscle and medial to that is the anterior scalene muscle and deeper is the first rib and the pleura. Uh, within the plexus, the, deep, the, the deepest part of the plexus is the lower trunk, immediately uh, here at the corner between the first rib and the uh, subclavian artery. In the middle is the middle trunk and the most superficial is the upper trunk, which already starts dividing at this level in most cases. Here's another form or another shape of the plexus. It's very variable uh, from one individual to the other. Uh, for example, in this individual, it's elongated. Moreover, you can also see that the first trip is in an elongated position as opposed to the, uh, to the, to the previous individuals. In this individual, the plexus has a different appearance with thicker fasticles. Moreover, it has a thick artery crossing over the plexus uh, at this level, and also the first rib is in an elevated position. In this individual, the plexus uh, has a part which is medial to the uh, subclavian artery, it's a part of the upper trunk, hangs over, so to say, uh, on the medial aspect of the subclavian artery. So you can see how variable the shape and the position of the brachial plexus can be. Uh, and there are also many other anatomical variations, such as accessory muscles like the scalenus minimus muscle. This is located in between the subclavian artery and the brachial plexus. Uh, and it has a space occupying effect. Normally, the plexus is immediately lateral to the artery. But here you have an extra muscle. Another very common uh, muscle anomaly is the medial insertion of the middle scalene muscle. Because here you can see that uh, it, it inserts on the first strip more medial than usual, sometimes even on the pleura, underneath the plexus and the subclavian artery, and it forms like a sling with the anterior scalene muscle underneath the neurovascular uh, bundle. This again has a space accompanying effect and uh, may be a risk factor for thoracic outlet syndrome. After you examine the supraclavicular fossa with the trunks, you advance further cranial uh, into the interscaline cleft, uh, where the, uh, the trunks, uh, or rather the roots, all line up more or less in a row. You can see it here in between the middle scalene muscle and the anterior scalene muscle. Again, here, the most superficial is the superior trunk with C5 and C6, which is already starting to divide, and the deepest part is the C8. And the subclavian artery is already starting uh, to leave the region underneath the anterior scalene muscle. In this individual, there's a, variability, uh, there's a variation in that in between the plexus elements, you can see these muscle bundles, interscalene muscle bundles. This is actually not uncommon. So they're not uh, immediately adjacent to each other, the plexus elements. Another quite common variation is the presence of a rudimentary cervical rib, uh, which is uh, located here in the interscalenic region. Uh, lateral to the plexus, uh, it's caudal to the seventh vertebra. You can see here a bony structure, which uh, which is the anterior tip of the cervical rib, and it has, of course, a posterior acoustic shadowing. In the longitudinal view, you can see that the cervical rib articulates with the uh, uh, transverse process of the seventh vertebra here is the joint. Then you move further uh, cranial into the prevertebral region to examine the individual nerve roots at the foraminal exit. And as I said before, these nerve roots uh, are identified by the shape of their respective transverse processes. Let's start with T1, which is not really a, a root, as I said before, but a communicating branch. It emerges from underneath the first rib. So when you go up, it disappears underneath the first rib. This is actually not easy to see in many individuals because of its deep position, but sometimes, like here, it can be clearly identified as it uh, separates from the C8 root. If you go further cranial, the C8 root, which uh, leaves uh, underneath the uh, vertebral body, it leaves the spinal canal underneath the seventh, uh, C7 vertebral body, you can see there's no transverse process here. 
whereas if you go to C7, uh, this already leaves the spinal canal on a transverse process, uh, but the C7 has a special shape. It has only a posterior tubercle and no anterior tubercle, so that's why the vertebral artery is visible here. If you go further, uh, before you go further proximal, just to show you uh, some of the vari uh, some variations uh, of this uh, C7 transverse process, it can go from very blunt to very elongated, finger-shaped uh, process like here. So it's really very variable among individual individuals. Now we go further uh, cranial to C6 and C5. Uh, these uh, are uh, enclosed by a V-shaped transverse process, and especially uh, the C6 uh, has a, um, a prominent anterior tubercle. It's also sometimes called carotid tubercle. And the further cranial you go, the smaller the transverse process be uh, becomes. Here you can see on the longitudinal view the roots as they leave the spinal canal. Here's the uh, transverse process on the longitudinal view. But you can also see here better, uh, uh, and, and also, of course, in the transverse uh, scans as well, is that just when the roots leave the spinal canal, they are completely hypoallergenic because there are no there is no interfascicular epineurium that forms further distal. So this is why the roots are hypoallergenic and they look like uh, blood vessels uh, at, the, at their foraminal exit. If you're lucky, um, this is not always the case, the nerve roots and the trunks are located in the same sagittal plane and in that case you can uh, uh, scan them or image them uh, in the longitudinal plane in one plane. Here you can see uh, going from C8 to C5 all the nerve roots then form the trunks and then eventually go underneath the clavicula. Now I will show you a video uh, of the scanning of the supraclavicular brachial plexus. Here, starting at the supraclavicular fossa, you can see the first strip, the subclavian artery and the pleura, and now we're slowly moving upwards. This is the lower trunk, separating into the T1 root, going underneath the first strip. You can see here, going underneath, then disappears, then you have the C8 root next to the uh, smooth contour of the seventh vertebra, and then comes the C7 root with the uh, C7 transverse process, and the vertebral artery here on the medial part, and then superficially the C6 root, now enclosed by a, a regular V-shaped transverse process. Then we go further cranial. You can see here the C5 root, which is enclosed by the transverse process of the C5 vertebra. It's smaller than the C6 vertebra. Now to show you another video uh, where there's an anatomical variation. Uh, you have a medial insertion of the middle scalene muscle. You can see it here that that's underneath the subclavian artery and uh, the brachial plexus. So we start the video. So as we move upwards, you can see that this muscle is going to the lateral part. You can see there's quite a little space between the subclavian artery and, and the um, lower trunk. Here's the C7 vertebra with the C7 and then C6 with a V-shaped transverse process, and then the C5 again with a V-shaped transverse process. Now we move uh, to the infra infraclavicular brachial plexus, uh, uh, where you start immediately below the clavicula. Uh, this is a more difficult part of the plexus to examine because it's located much deeper in between the pectoralis muscles and the serratus anterior muscle. So sometimes you will need a lower frequency transducer, usually at 12 MHz transducer, to be able to visualize the, the plexus. Uh, here uh, you see the more, prox or the more proximal part of the plexus uh, still uh, located in one piece lateral to the artery. Uh, underneath the subclavius, so below the subclavius muscle and uh, uh, above the serratus an uh, anterior muscle. And here you can also see the uh, subclavian vein, so it's plexus artery vein going from lateral to the medial direction. 
If you move further distal, you will see that the uh, plexus now is underneath the pectoralis muscles, the major and the pectoralis minor muscles are already at this level. And uh, now the three cords are formed, uh, the medial cord between the vein and the artery, and the lateral cord lateral and uh, the posterior cord dorsal to the artery. In, uh, a video scanning of the uh, infraclavicular plexus, uh, I recommend to start on the clavicula, then you drop off the clavicula. And what you will see, as you drop off, you will see the subclavius muscle here and the plexus underneath right lateral to the artery and over the serratus anterior muscle. Now, if we slowly go down, what you will see that the uh, cords begin to form around or move around the artery, posterior cord, now you can see the pectoralis mineral muscle uh, appearing, so posterior cord, medial cord, and lateral cord. Now we've already reached the axillary region. Okay, and thank you for your attention.